Okay, so we've separated out our kind of logic, anything that we would need to do in here with our actual HTML, but what about passing data down? Well, let's stick with this user's example, because in the case of a list of users, you would want to grab the users in here, and then you would want to pass them down to this view to be rendered out. So nice, clean, and separate. So let's take a look at a really basic example of how we pass data down, and then we'll look at a more advanced example of looping through. And once again, that Twig series will show you how to do this and more. So as the third argument here, what I'm gonna do is pass through an array. And obviously within an array, we can use keys and values. So we can pass uh, data down that we want to uh, associate with a particular key and then use that within our view. So in this case, let's say we had just a single user that we wanted to pass down. Maybe their name was Billy. Well, in this case, what I've now done is I've exposed this user variable with the value Billy to my view. Now, nothing would have changed yet, obviously. If we just go ahead and refresh users. Nothing has changed there. But what I can now do is go ahead and output this in here. So let's say this was actually a user profile. So let's say uh, this was just imagine uh, somewhere where we could see information about a particular user. Well, in this case, I could go ahead and maybe create a, a header in here. And then in here, I could now output that value that we've passed down. And that happens to be user. Now we don't need to use variables like a dollar sign, then the name, we can literally within Twig just use the value that we've passed down. So this makes it a lot more convenient as well. So let's go and give this a refresh and see what we get. And you can see sure enough within an H1, we see Billy. Now we know that because of the way that we've set this up, what we could do is say in here, profile for, and then the name of that variable. And also notice we're using double uh, curly braces here to output. That's basically just the standard of how we output something to the page. So there we go. That is pretty much how that would work. Uh, well, this would be user, obviously. There we go. So we see that in the title. So pretty straightforward. As long as you understand how this works, then you can pretty much do whatever you want inside of there. So let's go ahead and revert this back to users. Now, what happens if you were to say, pluck this user out of a database? Well, in this case, you would probably get an object back. And even if you got an array back, this wouldn't make too much difference. So let's say that this is the result of uh, getting something from your database. You have an array of data. So let's say that they had a username and their username was Billy. And let's say they had a name of, and then we could go ahead and show their full name like so. And then maybe they had an email address like this. So let's go ahead and say uh, billy at cocourse.com. So in this case, then we would pass down instead of passing down each individual thing, we would actually pass down the user array and then we could extract data from that. So, for example, in the H1, we might want to show the user's username. So in this case, I would say user dot username. So we now use dot notation to access each of these items from this array that we've passed down. So this would go ahead and give us the following. And then we could go ahead and down here, maybe use an unordered list with a list item. Any markup you want to use, you would go ahead and say user.name. And then maybe as the second one, you would say user.email. So really, really nice way to go ahead and work with data. You may not have been doing this before. So there we go. That is how easy it is. We've gone ahead and with some kind of URL, pass some data down and we've rendered it out and everything's nice and separate. We don't have to output any markup here. We just pass down what we want and we do something with it. So let's finally take another look at uh, a looping example. So let's say we did actually have a list of users and we had an array up here. Maybe this came back from our database as well. And inside of this array, we had many arrays with a username within each of these users. So let's say we had Alex and we had Billy and we had Dale. And we could have other information inside of each of these arrays as well. You would just uh, work with it in the same way. So we've passed down our users. Let's get rid of this so we can start to loop through these. Let's go over to here and just make sure that we don't have any errors. And let's start to loop through. So let's again say we had an unordered list. It doesn't have to be. But let's say I want to now loop and output a list item for each of them users. Well, in this case, what I would do is a similar thing to before. I'd still use my square bracket notation and my uh, percentage signs. And I would say for user in users. Now, this is kind of like a for each loop within PHP. In fact, it is 
uh, the syntax is just slightly different and we would go ahead and end that for there so it looks a little bit odd and it's kind of you know you have to get used to these kind of things but we're saying for each of the users we're just going to call them user and now what i can do within here is output using my double uh, curly braces user dot and then whatever property you have in there for in this case we have username so now let's go over and preview this and there we go we have a list of our users and this will work exactly the same way like i said if this comes back from your database we will be looking at more examples of this later but for now that should give you a good idea as to how to separate things and how easy it is to pass things down and then go ahead and do something with them